Prices for cars and trucks are going through the roof, especially for trucks. And if you're looking in the market for one of these with around 100,000 miles, what can you expect to have to replace with that many miles on it? Let's take a look. So this is a 2008 Chevy 1500 with the 5.3 liter LS based motor and it has roughly 140,000 miles on it. The customer stated that they want to re reach 200,000 miles or more. So he handed us the keys and he said check it over, let me know everything that it needs, do a thorough inspection. So I have worked on so many of these in the years past, I haven't even looked at this yet and I'm going to do wizard telepathy and I can tell you everything that's already wrong with this LS based motor. Okay, it's got broken exhaust bolts on the manifolds, possibly leaking from the oil cooler block off plate that's right above the oil filter. The oil pan gasket might be leaking. I think the sway bar links are probably shot on this thing. Probably suspension shocks or something along those lines. And we're going to check the oil pressure sending unit and we'll also check the air conditioning belt, the small serpentine belt just for the AC compressor which always throws the belt and you lose your AC. So we'll walk around this truck, take a look at it, and then we'll look on the inside, and then we'll delve into the engine and underneath. So these were offered with a 4.8 or 5.3 liter and if you got the HD version you could also get the 6 liter. They're both basically the same engine with just different internals for larger or smaller displacement. This one's in pretty good shape for its age. I can see that it's going to need tires. They're all down to the wear indicators, the wear bars. Sadly I'm starting to see these. I remember when they were new. This is when this first body style came out. 07 I think or 08. And these are already being seen on the road with rust and crushed and beat up and it's like, wow, those trucks aren't all that old, but then you think about it, they actually kind of are. The paint's pretty decent on here. Luckily, it's not rusted or beat up. This one's a two-wheel drive. It is not a 4x4. Four four. The headlights could be refinished to get them nice and clear, but that has nothing to do with whether or not it will be reliable for the next two years to come. That's just for appearance only. So, we'll see where we go with that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interior. Pretty basic in here, Mrs. Wizard. Yeah, yeah it is. This is definitely, you know, just a normal layout for a Chevy. It does have a good dash, so there's a little bit of a crack happening up there, but nothing, nothing terribly bad. You know, one thing we just did discover as we were trying to open up the doors to here is the power locks don't work. So if only one person's sitting in here, that's not a problem. Otherwise, it's a bit of a reach to get over there to get that door. Otherwise, interior-wise, nice cloth seats has a really big center console, which actually can be put up to offer for you know, a total of six people in here, back seat as well. So this actually could be actually a family car. It doesn't have any of those bells and whistles with no infotainment system, but if all you're needing is a little bit of radio, a little bit of tunes going as you're going down the road, you know, and obviously we've got two ports where you can charge your devices, this is working just fine. You can tell the person that was here before really liked to control the air volume and they have rubbed off the covering on their fan. Again, doesn't change the functionality of it, it just now has green dots. The steering wheel has lots of controls and again you'd want to check those out if you were to pick up this as a used device just because cruise control has a tendency sometimes not to work. Again, lots of controls here on the door, everything is easily accessed lights controls as well so just an easy easy to use you know and maintain car you see the gauges we've got a lot happening we check our oil pressure uh, what is the charge on the battery and the you know temperature at the engine so you know if you're towing something with this you can definitely keep a good track of how well the systems are under the body let's pop the hood let's do it So here we have the 5.3 liter, which is the zero engine code. It is very easy to work on these. 
These have about 315 horsepower and 340 pound-feet of torque, and I'm here to tell you that that power doesn't come in until about 4,000 RPMs. These engines are not a low RPM tugging motor like a Cummins 6BT or a big block 8.1 Vortec. They can do the job, but your RPMs are going to be up there when you're towing. I've worked on a lot of these and actually have owned a couple of trucks with these engines and they, like I said, they do the job, but don't be surprised when you're towing up a hill at 3,500, 4 grand, or even 5 grand to get up the hill. They are not low RPM monsters, so. Will that hurt the engine being at that kind of RPM for a long time? Um, no, it won't hurt the engine, but you'll sure go through a lot of fuel. As you can see, on these newer ones, there's no fan in the way. It has electric fans. There's no mechanical fan in the way, I should say, so you can get to the belt really easy. And you can reach all the way around. It's very easy to work on. So I did my telepathy and I predicted that it would have broken exhaust bolts. Let's take a look. Right back in there, there's supposed to be a bolt head there. And there's also supposed to be one behind that in the next hole back. Nothing's there. Those bolts are broken and popped out. Let's go take a look at the other side. Same thing, both rear bolts are broken, popped out of there. There's supposed to be heads where those holes are, and they're gone. So to fix that problem, if it was just one bolt that we had to deal with, we could probably chance getting it out without removing the manifolds, but there are five bolts missing out of 12 total. And that is going to be where we removed both exhaust manifolds completely out of the vehicle. If we get lucky, we can probably get some pliers and pull the remnants of the bolt out if there's enough sticking out. But if not, it will have to be drilled out with an easy out. Usually they come out pretty easy. We usually don't have to do major, major surgery. On these that I have to drill out, I charge half an hour per bolt because it literally will take that much time to drill those out. If you think that's too high, you drill it out. I have a really cool story with drilling those bolts out. Years ago at a place I used to work, one of the old guys, his sight wasn't so good anymore. He could drill really well, but he was drilling through the bolt and all of a sudden he saw a little bit of green liquid and he pulled the drill out and it was just a stream of antifreeze. He drilled straight into the water jacket of the head. Now that ended up having to be a new head. So if you're gonna drill it out yourself, Make sure you're careful. There are three ways you can destroy your cylinder head. You can blow out the hole to where the threads are messed up. You could drill too deep and drill into your water jacket. You could also crack the head if you put a bolt in of the wrong size and try to torque it down and just crack it. Make sure you know what you're doing. I do know what I'm doing. I'm going to charge you a half an hour to do it. When do you have to do it? I mean, if one's broken, two, four... Um, really, it comes down to if it starts making the puffing noise at idle, especially when it's cold, it'll be like a ch -ch 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 -ch. It sounds like a lifter almost, like a ticking noise. I've repaired probably at least a hundred pairs of these manifolds, a lot of them. So other than that, I don't see a whole lot going on up here. I'll take a look real quick at the oil pressure sending unit, and I can just peek back here. It's kind of hard to see, but it's way behind the intake. You can see the wiring going to it, and it's nice and dry. That's a common failure point on these motors. They will leak oil, or your oil pressure gauge will go to zero all the time, and it's usually the oil pressure sending unit. They, they're not very well made, I don't think. Another thing is intake gaskets on these. When it's cold in the morning, it runs, it misfires, it runs real rough, and when it warms up, it runs perfect. That's because the intake gaskets are basically a piece of plastic with like rubber, rubber O-rings molded into it or something. They have upgraded ones that fix that problem. This one luckily is not doing that. There's no issues with that right now. That is another thing that I've done on these engines. I've done a lot of them. I got so fast at it that the job would pay, I think, two or three hours to replace those gaskets. I had done so many of them that I could remove 
the manifold in 15 minutes and have it setting on the ground. Clean everything up, new gaskets, and back together in another 30 minutes. So 45 minutes, I could have the job done. And yes, we would still charge the customer the three hours because it will take you probably three hours to do it. It took me years to get that fast. I'm not going to give myself a pay cut for being a good mechanic. I'm going to charge you the same. Let's go ahead and get this thing lifted up and look underneath. So as we're going along and checking the truck over, keep in mind that you're in the market for one of these. What can you expect to replace? Now the seller's going to say this thing's cherry, it's perfect. I've been maintaining it. I have a stack this tall of service records. I don't care. You're still going to find all these things wrong with these trucks. They all have those things wrong with them. Service records doesn't keep the exhaust bolts from breaking. They still do it. So. Let's go ahead and start right here. There is a shield, plastic shield, that's in the way. I really like these trucks. They're easy to work on, like I mentioned already, but you can see that you can just pretty much get to everything. There's tons of room. I don't see any major leaks coming from up front on the front main seal. These usually don't have those kinds of issues. We can see this tensioner right here that I'm actually pointing to, that's the AC belt tensioner, and you can see the AC belt is also kind of old. Those are very known on these trucks to the tensioner to lock up, it throws the belt. That's definitely a thing you want to probably just get replaced as preventive maintenance before it happens, because it will happen on these. Let's go ahead and check these wheels and brakes. Brakes look good. Nothing loose there. No oil coming from the strut. The rack boots are dry. Uh-oh, look at that sway bar link. That's shot, I figured that would be. Right here, where I'm pointing, commonly leaks on these. This one's not, I was wrong. But there's a gasket that goes here. This is where an oil cooler can mount if you have a heavy duty towing package. This one just is blocked off with this plate. But frequently these things will pour oil all the way down here and then I get a call and say, give me a quote for a rear main seal. And I say, well, we'd like to get the truck in and take a look to see really what's going on. And they're like, no, 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 this is a rear main seal. Go ahead and quote it to me. So I work, do the time and get the estimate together and then bring the truck in. And it's just a $10 gasket. And they're out of there for 50, 75 bucks. And they're like, why didn't you replace my rear main seal? I have to fight and argue. I have to pull this little inspection cover off. Look at this cover, guys. That's a little cover that you can take off and look inside and see if it's oily. This one's not inside of there. But I have to show the customer it's dry as a bone in there. Your rear main seal is not leaking. And I show them the gasket and they're like, oh. I'm like, yeah, oh. I wasted my time doing that estimate. Okay. Here's the transmission. We are going to be servicing this one. It's about 140,000 miles. That's about the maximum I like to go before service. If you've got 220,000 miles on your transmission, I will not service it for you because that can run into problems and cause issues. The truth of the matter is, is you've probably got another 50,000 miles left on your transmission anyways, regardless if you service it or not. Let's see. This little vent right here. That is an extension. It's a kind of an upgrade for the EVAP vent solenoid. Those frequently get coked up with dirt. And this moves it forward up here away from dirt and dust. I'll show you that in here in a minute. Let's move over here to this wheel now. Here's the brakes. Nothing loose there. And our sway bar link is loose. Everything else looks good. Bushings look good, so we'll get sway bar links on the ticket, on the estimate. Check this U-joint, it looks good. Move on back. Here is our vent. This is a little filter for the 
tank vent solenoid. Those get filled up with dirt because they used to suck in air back here, but now they have an extension, it's kind of an upgrade that pulls air up at a cleaner area. Okay, we'll move on back to the dif differential. That U-joint is good, nothing really leaking there. These have drum brakes in the rear. The shock is kind of oily coming out and it's rusted pretty bad. Let's check the other side. You can see the filth in the mud that is built up. That's from oil seepage coming out of it. These shocks are dying. So we'll get a quote for two new shocks in the back. Spare tire is good and it's nice and full. And as I mentioned, he's going to need four new tires. We're going to quote that to him as far as he needs to take it to a tire shop. We're not going to give him a quote, actually. We don't do tires here. I've had people in the comment section say, why don't you do tires? It's because in order to make tires pay and profitable for a business, I need to do probably 50 sets of them a day. I'm not going to do that many tires, and I really don't want to do that. I'm not into tires. I would rather make money on things like this. I can make a lot more money on these repairs than I can on tires. So my personal preference and my choice that we don't do tires here. This has the towing package, a nice receiver hitch. It doesn't look like it was used very much. Exhaust is nice and clean. Alright, let's go ahead and get this thing lowered down. So if you were in the market for this truck, you just purchased this truck, you can plan on adding anywhere from fifteen hundred to four grand to whatever you just spent on this. Tires are not cheap. He's going to need all four new tires. Those manifolds have to come off. That's not done in thirty minutes. That takes several hours, three or four hours to do. And you got parts and bolts and everything to do. Then you got belts and shocks and sway bar links. Things add up really fast. One thing we've not been able to see is how hard the transmission's been worked. I don't think it was very much based on what I saw on the receiver hitch. It's not towed a whole lot. But you can pull the fluid dipstick, the transmission dipstick. It should be bright red and smell like transmission fluid. If it smells like really hot brakes, like burned up brakes, that means the fluid has been way overheated and that something could be wrong with the transmission. If not now, it will be soon. You want to make sure you check the fluid level and also the condition of the fluid when you check it. Other than that, a road test will tell you if there's any issues. Also, you can take it to a mechanic and have them scan for any codes in the transmission control module. That'll give you an idea of what's going on. One thing that I find in the shop is that people try to do their own estimates within their own mind what it's going to cost to fix their car, and they never include the labor. They look up an alternator that's 200 bucks, so they think to change out that alternator, it's going to be 200 bucks. Or are we working for free? No, we're not working for free. You got half an hour, an hour, depending, or it could be two or three hours, and some other cars are really difficult to get to. Why is it so high? Because you're paying me to do the job. Oh, I, I didn't even think about that. Wow. Okay, so this is in really good condition. For 140,000 miles in a 2008, I would totally buy this truck. I have no qualms about the issues it has. They're all easily fixed. You can either do it yourself or pay someone to do it. These trucks are very reliable. They're very good. I would have no issue with this truck at all. Prices on everything have gone through the roof. Uh, there's not much we can do about that. I don't know how long it's going to last. Hoovy has actually showed me a few instances where cars on cars and bids should be a twenty or thirty thousand dollar car all day long and they're selling for fifty and eighty thousand dollars it's like whoa what's going on with people right now it's kinda crazy thinking about selling show of hands how many of you remember Hoovy buying a silver Jaguar XJ8 I think it's like a 2000 model where the wheel was about to break off and I snagged it from him that car actually belongs to Junior Mint now here's a picture of it and it is for sale he would like to get rid of it contact Crazy D in the office, call us here at Omega. He'll be happy to get you the information on it, the asking price, and get that thing moved on. It is a really sweet car. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to fix this truck, or all the cars in the shop, 
Check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button because we've got 308 videos coming. We've got all kinds of really sweet projects going. Thanks for watching.